it's September 16. As soon as the Russians suffer another setback at the front, I immediately start receiving threatening messages from my former Russian colleagues and people I don't know at all. This is a direct sign. If the Russians had a failure at the front, they immediately turn to insults and threats on social networks. They do not seem to understand how ridiculous they look at the same time. They threaten with death a person who, realizing all the dangers, went to the front as a volunteer. I do not respond to these threats. I generally do not enter into any dialogues with people who threaten me or other Ukrainians with death. It's crazy how wild and nightmarish things are happening before our eyes in the 21st century. A huge state makes the destruction of a neighboring country its main national idea pumps up its own citizens with hatred for its neighbors and then sends them to kill, rape and rob, passing it off as an act of patriotism. Just imagine not building hospitals and schools, not raising beggarly pensions to any acceptable level, not saving sick children, not education or science, but genocide has become the main state priority in modern Russia. Everything in Russia is already subordinated to the idea of destroying Ukraine and Ukrainians. On TV, they only say that Ukraine should not exist, that Ukrainian culture and history are fiction, that Ukrainians are not a real people. In schools, patriotism lessons are held at least twice a week, during which children are told about the same thing. Old people are being expelled from the hospitals to make room for the wounded invaders. Bookstores are littered with books justifying the killing of Ukrainians and the seizure of foreign lands. They make heroes out of terrorists and rapists, erect monuments to them and name streets after them. Russians are sincerely surprised that Ukraine resists, does not surrender to murderers and rapists. This is directly angers them. How do you, a fictional people, dare to fight against us? Why don't you voluntarily go into slavery? Don't stand at the execution wall. Don't recognize yourself as a second-class people whose main task is to submit to the Russians. My recent colleagues, journalists and photographers from Russia, curse me for not giving up my Ukrainian identity, for taking up arms and doing everything in my power to drive the Russians out of Ukraine. For them, this is the most terrible crime, which must be answered with mass terror. The Taliban, compared to modern Russia, is a children's dance club. Al-Qaeda are bloodthirsty amateurs. Terror has become not only acceptable for the Kremlin, but the main instrument of interaction with the rest of the world. And many Russians approve it. This is some kind of twisted world. Unemployment is growing there. Everything is becoming more expensive day by day. You can't get normal medicines, new cars and spare parts for them too. But people are ready to endure all of this if only the state continues to kill Ukrainians, bomb cities and seize new territories. Even the opposition in Russia is not those who are against the war, but those who believe that Russia is not acting bloody and cruel enough. We will definitely win this war, no matter how long it lasts and no matter how hard it is. But after our victory, an important question will arise. What to do next? How to protect ourselves from the new encroachments from our neighbors who are raised in hatred toward us from childhood? This will be the task for all tasks.